Hello YouTube and welcome to part 17 of our Realism Overhaul series. Before we get started I want to talk about something I saw on Reddit today. Uh, Soviet Carrot put a post up there that his dad's birthday is coming up in a few days and he wanted to put together a compilation video for him. So I thought that was pretty awesome, a few other people did. So I said I was going to dedicate this episode to his dad Igor. So uh, happy birthday Igor, uh, I hear that you're a big KSP fan, so, so am I obviously, that's why I make videos. Uh, but I'm hoping that you get to see this and that you're excited about what your son put together. It sounds like a really cool guy to go through all that. Also, uh, Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 was released yesterday. So I tried uh, upgrading my game to that. And of course, none of the mods worked yet. Realism Overhaul is still not ready. Um, okay, it's already only been 24 hours, so I'm not trying to rush them. They do a great job, so I know it's not ready yet. Uh, and there's a few mod dependencies that they're waiting on before we can really um, run it all. But whenever it does, you can be sure that I'll switch over to that. I'm the kind of guy that likes running on the latest stuff. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and resume our saved game. I've been excited about today's mission because we finally get to launch the double. Uh, but in the meantime, we have the science that we unlock, so we should go see what's available in R&D. All right, so I'm pretty sure the next thing we're going to want to unlock is in the electric section. We get some really cool things in here. We get this RPWS antenna, the radio and plasma wave science instrument measures electrostatic and electromagnetic fields generated by the interaction of planetary magnetospheres and the interplanetary plasma medium. In short, I think this gives us science. Same thing with the scan radar altimetry sensor. Uh, we'll get into low orbits and we'll actually get some altimetry off of this thing, which will give us some more science. We got some fuel cells. We have the ST4 solar panel, which I think is pretty big if I remember. Um, some radiators, which I haven't had to use yet. And these deployable solar panels. I think these are going to be good for us too. Uh, we get some more antennas, but I think I'm going to go ahead and research this. All right, going to take three years. So for now, we can at least try to upgrade uh, with this. By researching this, it gives us an upgrade point. So I guess we'll go ahead and spend that in R&D. So I'll go over to here, Upgrades, and R&D. Plop that in. Now, we have a fair amount of money. I think I'm going to spend six more points and throw them into R&D just to speed stuff up. And now what it's, does it say? Uh, cut the time pretty much in, well, not in half, but over uh, a little bit over two years now. So it's not horrible. But uh, today's mission was to launch, whoop, that's not what I wanted, resume. <laughs> I want to launch the double. So we'll roll this guy out, warp to completion. And for some reason, it seems dark no matter what time it is right now. So let me actually warp to the morning and see what happens. Looks like sun's coming up. I did reinstall... Um, the environmental enhancements for realism overhaul. So we'll see how those work. Go ahead and launch. All right, I'm going to try using the scent guidance on this guy. Pull this up. This looks pretty standard. So I'll engage autopilot. Check my staging, which looks pretty good, except for the fact that we have these in the same stage. I'll roll these up here. And I think the rest is right, so let's uh, go for orbit. Go for launch. Now, I remember last time we had some issues with that decoupler, not decoupler, but that launch clamp down there. So I don't know what was up with that. This one seems to have decoupled fine. I guess that's the sun poking through the clouds. No, I guess that's a planet. It does seem really dark. Go orbital prograde. At this point, I'll go surface or horizontal velocity prograde. This thing just really likes to rise. Separate and fire up our next stage. Go ahead and get this out of the way. High enough, I can go ahead and deploy my fairings. And 
and we'll go ahead and extend the antenna on this upper satellite just so we don't lose connection. I'm really excited about this mission. I'm looking forward to getting our CompSat network all set up. There's the sun. Yeah, it's getting a lot brighter now. Now I think I have another window here. Uh, I thought there was something about my target. But there's a vessel, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I thought whenever I selected a target I'd get information about its orbit, but I might just add that as a section here. Or maybe do it on the... Um, which one is it? The Rendezvous Planner? Let's see what that looks like. So if I select a target, I'm going to go ahead and select one of my commsats. Uh, that's my failure. I should really have renamed these. I think I'm going to do that once this gets into orbit. So, alright, so I get relative inclination, which is good, but one thing I'm going to want is, there's two things I'm going to want. Phase angle, which will tell me how many degrees in my orbit I'm off of their orbit, and I'm also going to want um, orbital period. I have my orbital period, but I want the target's orbital period so I can make sure that we have the same orbital period. And I don't think that there's any way to edit this screen, so I might just need to add it on this guy. So I'll go ahead and edit him, and let's see, under, whoops, I think it's under miscellaneous. I want to want a new line. Where was that? Separator, that's what I want. So I'll add that separator. And now I think there's one for target. And let's see, I want... This is all docking stuff. Phase, angle to target. I do want that. And I want relative inclination. And I want target orbital period. And I'll go ahead and put target orbit on there just so we can see the orbit, what we're going for. So that'll help me whenever I'm lining up um, my, my orbits between all the satellites. So that's good. Go ahead and separate. And right now I just want to circularize. good enough. If we take a look at uh, time to apoapsis and then equatorial descending node. Um, well, actually it looks like I will have burned up by then. So, man, it does not want me to select the Earth as a, my target. Not even as my target, but I want to... Man. Um, it just wants to pick up different satellites. Normally whenever I double click on this, it lets me focus in on the Earth, but it's not doing that right now. So I will do just another burn here to circularize, I guess. So let's work forward. Alright, whoop. Why is that not slowing down? I keep forgetting whenever I have my cursor in here, it doesn't let me slow down. So I want um, orbit prograde, turn on RCS. My propellant stable, that's good. Let's just boost this up a little bit more. All right, that's, that's probably good enough. Now I want to add maneuver node pretty much here at this ascending node and I'm going to bring my apoapsis out to 3 million meters 
That's pretty close. A little bit more. All right, that's pretty much on the money. <clears throat> and that's just a prograde maneuver, so I'm just going to keep being aligned to prograde. Go ahead and warp forward just a little bit. It says it's going to take a minute and a half, but again, I think that's a lie. So. Either way, I'll give myself about 40 seconds on either side. All right, very unstable. So now I need to use RCS to kind of give myself some eulage or ellage, whatever it is. I keep, I think I keep saying it wrong. All right, here we go. And again, I'm bringing this up to 3 million meters, which should be about whenever this runs down to zero. All right, close enough. So now I'm going to set up another maneuver node to circularize and um, adjust my inclination down to zero degrees. Here we go, now I focus on the Earth, that's better. So my apoapsis is here, and my ascending node is there. I thought I did this so they would be pretty close to aligned, but... Oh, <laughs> I'm an idiot, I'm looking at the apoapsis of my target. Here we go, yeah, what do you know? Apoapsis and ascending node are pretty much aligned right here. So I can go here and say I want a new maneuver and I want to bring up my periapsis. Get this out of the way. So looks like that's pretty close. But now I need to adjust it so my inclination is much lower. That's that's pretty close. Reduce this a bit more. Oops. And my descending node here is we're just not saying how big my ascending or descending node is. But that orbit looks pretty close, so normally you can right click on these things. Oh now it has a descending node point one. Um, whenever you right click on these nodes here the display will lock in and it won't go away. So normally if you just hover over something, you get some text below there, like that guy. And then whenever you right click on him, he stays, which is kind of nice. I don't know why the text is disappearing for some of these, but I think this is a pretty good orbit. This is going to use up 800 meters per second at Delta V. The stage has so much, so I mean, pretty much the my satellites won't even need to use any of their their fuel, except to do, do some minor orbit adjustments and syncing up the other satellites. This is a guy who's going to have enough to do the um, insertion into low Earth orbit as well as uh, to burn, like do the retro burn to um, do orbit itself. So let's go ahead and warp to this next node. All right, we'll get a little bit closer. That's good. I'm going to want to lock it on my node. Fuel state's very stable. All right, let's do this maneuver. So by the time this maneuver is done, my eccentricity should be zero and my inclination should be zero or just about zero. Also, my relative inclination should be zero, and hopefully my latitude is pretty close to zero. This guy might be a little bit off, but so far everything is looking pretty good. We should hit a periapsis of about, both a periapsis and apoapsis of three million meters. All right, looks like as close as we're gonna get. Close enough for me, satellites can do the rest of the work. 
So the first stage, or the first step, is going to be to deploy this upper satellite. And I'm going to warp to where it's sunny so we can see this a little bit better. So going around the world. Here we go. That's good enough. Uh, don't care about where I'm pointing right now for this guy. So I'm just going to release him. Hopefully that's my next stage. I think it is. I'll quick save just in case we have any issues. All right, quick saved. So let's fire this guy off. All right, looks like that worked. Head over to him. Going to enable RCS and just push off ever so slightly. That looks great. And you can see our other little satellite in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and rename this guy. I wasn't renaming the other guys, but I'm, I'm going to need to do that. So this guy is not going to be the double probe. It's going to be, um, what do we call this? L-E-O, whoops, L-E-O, comsat. Uh, this is the third one that we launched. So L-E-O comsat three. And this is for remote tech. So remote tech, remote tech, L-E-O, comsat three. Okay. We will accept that. And I really want this guy out of the way, so I'm going to play him prograde. And I don't know how well these RCS thrusters are going to work since the center mass and everything is so close together, but it seems to work all right. And I don't want to hit this guy. All right. He's out of the way. That's good. So now let's switch back here. And we should be able to deploy these fairings. Oh, look, there's Florida. I've actually never played with any of the city light stuff working, so it's kind of cool to see that working. So go ahead and deploy these fairings. Way to go. And let's extend all these antennas. All right, now we're gonna decouple this node down here, which should be our next stage. But before we do that, I need to set this guy up in a spin. Otherwise, he has no RCS, and we can see our fuel state's unstable right now. So I'm going to want him to wind up pointing retrograde. So I will go ahead and lock in retrograde and start moving around. And we can see that these are stable now. So I'll turn off RCS, and I'll just maintain this spin. And then I'm going to wait for this guy to be pointing prograde again so he can burn off and away. And this guy should be uh, still spinning, so this fuel state should remain stable. All right, we'll pop this guy off. And looks like I forgot to <laughs> disable um, the, um, the impulse on that stage. But this guy, we're going to rename him. So change, not that guy. Uh, Change no, that's the rename right above it. There we go. Oh, this is the one that I just did. I need the other one. Not that. Not this. This guy maybe. Rename vessel. Here we go. Yep. Remote tech L E O com sat, and this is the fourth one. Save him. Except, and all right, good. This guy's still spinning. This fuel state should become stable pretty soon. There we go. And he's going to want to be pointing retrograde. Did I save any power? Please tell me this guy has power. He should. He has solar panels, so he should have some power. Yeah, he's got full power. Good. All right, let's go ahead and deorbit you. Thank you for all your service with 28 meters per second at Delta 8. Not 28. 2.8 kilometers per second at Delta V left. Go ahead and let the sky drop down. Now normally I'd try to deorbit these over some non-populated area. Let's see where this guy looks like he would deorbit. So if we can get him coming in the atmosphere around here, that'd probably be best. Yeah, I like that. So I think he'll deorbit somewhere in the Indian Ocean. Mm 
now it's time for the meat of this mission where we actually align all these satellites. So let's go ahead and head back to the map and we will find our other commsats and rename them accordingly. So here's four and three is probably right around here. This is our T commsat, so we'll go ahead and switch to him. It's nice that I can do this now. All right, this guy has been up there for one year and 299 days. So I don't know if that's my first satellite. I think it is, because this guy is, is pretty close to our target orbit. So I'm gonna assume he is. Oh, these are the old guys. And I'm going to rename this guy. And we're gonna say remote tech um, LEO compsat one, except and we should probably really try to fine-tune this guy's orbit. So this is good. My inclination could be better. So where do I pass the equator? That's the question. Take a look at my latitude and we'll just wait for this to become really close to zero. All right, so we are in the Southern Hemisphere. We're heading towards the Northern Hemisphere. So I want to leave the anti-normal direction. So now we're pointing south, and so I think that was too much, so use our CS to back ourselves off. All right, inclination is zero degrees, so that's really good. And now I really want to lock this in right at three million meters. So um, what do we do to do that? Right now I am descending, so I'll wait for this to actually, is there a better altitude display than this? Probably, I bet I can add it here. Go ahead and edit this guy, and I want, uh, I think it's orbit maybe, or maybe it's a vessel, let's see. Vessel, crew, blah, 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 oh, she's torque. No, maybe it is orbit. Just want altitude, current altitude. Never know where these things are. Altitude above sea level, I think that's what I want. And I'm going to move him up. Go ahead and put him right there. All right, so I want radial out because now I'm falling and I want to boost that back up. Of course, I don't see any RCS firing on this. I have a connection. Why don't you want to work? Why doesn't it let me right click on anything? Because I'm time warping, that's probably why. Yeah, and I think it's really trying to overcompensate. So let's kill the rotation. Doesn't even want to do that. Not time warping. Let's try, oh, because I turned off RCS. One day I will figure out how this game works, I promise you. All right, let's turn this off and take manual control. So now just pointing straight up. All right, and let's negate our vertical speed. And look, our apoapsis was getting really close to three million meters. All right, I think I'm gonna use that and then Warp over to the apoapsis, which is in two hours. Now, right now, oh, that, that's my altitude. Yeah, so I need to point prograde and now just raise my periapsis up too far. All right, probably as close as we're going to get it. Now this is going to be my baseline target, so I need to try to find my other commsat and put it into an orbit that's 90 degrees off of this guy. 
So where are you, other commsat? It'd be nice if you were like either 90 degrees or 108 degrees off. That's the failed one. Here you are. So let's switch to you. Now here, we are going to set our first commsat as our target. So he is somewhere. Where are you, first commsat? Right here. Set as target. All right, we can see our phase angle to target is 63 degrees. So we really need that to be 90 degrees. Relative inclination is good. We need to make sure our orbital periods match up to be about the same. If apoapsis and periapsis are off a little bit, that's not as critical as our orbital period, which is close to being right now. So I really need to increase my angle to the target. I'm too close. Um, I am here, and my uh, the other guy is... Where is he? Well, yeah, right here. <clears throat> so I need to sort of fall behind in my orbit, and the way to do that is to orbit slower. So I actually need to boost my apoapsis out. So I'm going to point prograde, and I will do this manually actually again. From the problems we had before. I always turn the wrong way first time. This is not prograde. This is retrograde. All right, there we go. And now I'm sure there's some math that we could do uh, with our orbital period. Um, so right now our orbital period is, our target is two and a half hours, roughly. So I'm trying to think um, what, how far back we should shift um, to go back. So for now, I'm just going to do, I'm going to boost it up so there's a 10 minute difference. Because um, I'm trying to think, if you could think how many degrees you move around a minute. So this would be um, 60, 120, 150 minutes. So a rough estimate. There's, there's 360 degrees, but let's say there's only 300 degrees in a circle. Um, that would mean, I guess, every 10 minutes you're going 20 degrees. And if we're at 63, so I really need 30, so I guess rough math would say 15 minute time difference. So I'll start with, um, I'll do a 10 minute time difference. So I'll bring my orbital period up to two minutes, two hours and 40 minutes. And here I need to lock prograde two hours and 40 minutes and we'll see what kind of effects that has on my phase angle. I'm thinking it should be probably about 20 degrees. So we'll see if I'm right. Let's go ahead and boost this up and just watch our orbital period. You know what, it's gonna take, um, I don't wanna use up too much fuel. So I'm actually just gonna raise it up by five minutes and we'll see what that five minute difference does. So five minutes from 2.30.27 would be 2.35.27. So let's just boost that up to, whoop, too far. Use RCS back off. All right, turn off RCS. And now let's see what a five minute difference makes in our phase angle. So how do I know when I'm back here? Um, be good if I like started at a pro like a apoapsis or periapsis, but it doesn't look like I really really did that. I am close to the setting node, so and uh, yeah, I guess I am close to periapsis. So I'll just warp again to my next periapsis, and we can see that this is increasing. So now uh, I always forget that whenever I mouse over this. It, I can't adjust anything. So we did two orbits, which was effectively 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and exit my our time warp. And actually we got really close. So I think I'm gonna to wanna to reduce this. Um, I can probably, here, let's see what happens if we warp forward to periapsis. It's getting lower, so it's fine. Because I'm actually at the faster part of my orbit down here. So I'm gonna slow down. Gonna point retrograde. 
And instead of a five minute jump, I'm probably just gonna do a one minute jump. So keep my orbital period. And I'm gonna bring that down to 31 minutes, 27 seconds. All right, that's close enough. And now I think I'm just gonna just warp until my phase angle of the target's 90 degrees. This is close enough to my intended orbit. Um, and it's above, um, I gotta just might make sure my eccentricity is low enough, but I think I think we'll be okay. So let's see. Well, let's exit time warp. Now I am a little high here. I'm actually pretty close to my apoapsis, which kind of stinks. I was hoping that I would be um, hoping that I'd be lower. So I think what we can do is. Um, Go ahead and, and uh, oops, get out of here. We'll point retrograde again. And I'm going to lower this to be the same orbital period. Um, and I'll leave it here. I'll see if maybe our, maybe our eccentricity will be low enough. We should have probably adjusted our inclination. Didn't think about doing that. So maybe I'll do that later. So let's go ahead and do some orbital period again. All right, that's where I want it. And I do want to adjust my inclination. So I will warp to where this is zero and make my final adjustment. All right, I'm heading south, which means I'll need to point north. All right, so that would be normal. And I'm watching this, trying to get this down to zero. Oh, nailed it. That was awesome. And now turn off RCS and how does our orbital period look? Is this still good? Uh, it's a few seconds fast. So I will point either prograde or retrograde, doesn't really matter. And use RCS to adjust that again. Facing the target, pretty close, 90 degrees, close enough. Incentricity is, is kind of low. All right, so I want to um, boost this up. There we go. Now, if I really want to circularize this guy, I can get to where our altitude is around 3 million meters. You can see our phase angle is a little bit off here, so I'm going to see what it looks like on the other side. A little higher, a little high on this side, so that's kind of what I figured, though. But I will go ahead and um, point radially out, and I'll try to knock out our vertical speed and then circularize at this point. All right, keep an eye on that. All right, and orbital period still looks pretty good. Let's see if I can adjust this with um, RCS a little bit. There we go. That's pretty much on the money. Inclination's low. Or inc actually, our inclination. The heck, inclination boosted back up by doing that. Didn't think I made inclination changes. Guess we should go ahead and fix that again. All right, I think that's probably close enough. So now we just got to do the same thing for the other two satellites, and then I think we can say this mission successful. All right, let's head back to the Space Center. Actually, no, I don't know why I did that. First of all, I even forgot to rename this vessel, so let's, let's go back and rename him. All right, and now let's switch to number three. And we'll want to speed up our orbit to put ourselves 180 degrees from ComSat 2. So we're going to point retrograde and set this guy as our target. Let's initiate a retrograde burn, slow our orbit down by about four minutes. And for some reason, I'm not getting those engine effects on the one kilonewton engine. But keep an eye on our phase angle. Let that drop to 180. Uh, that should be close enough. 
Let's go ahead and bring my apoapsis up to three million meters. And we can see that the inclination got out of whack. So let's try to adjust this guy, especially since we're at the equator right here. And it looks good. <clears throat> we'll coast up to around three million meters and we'll circularize by burning radial. We want to kill our vertical velocity here. And before we totally circularize, I want to see if we can adjust our phase angle. All right, that's too far. Let's push our orbit up now to catch up. And so we'll burn prograde here to do that. And now we'll time warp a little bit until our phase angle gets around 180. All right, that should be close enough. Let's go ahead and adjust our orbital period here. All right, just burn a little retrograde. And there we go. All right, now because I'm a stickler, I want to try to fix my inclination pretty close to the equator. So, all right, that looks pretty good. So now we'll switch to our other comp set. All right, first things first, a slight deorbit maneuver. All right, now we'll set our target at comp set one. Again, we're going for 180 degrees. And this guy is going to take a lot of time warping. Oh, overshot, so we got to burn prograde again. And now we'll just time warp till that's better. All right, that looks good. Let's kill our vertical speed again while we're right around 3 million meters. Let's go ahead and clear those notifications. Adjust our orbital period. Looks good. Go ahead and fix our inclination again. All right. I think that's actually close enough. That one was a little bit easier, but we've done it four times, so it should be by now. Let's go ahead and look at this contract. Uh, remote tech. All right. Everything looks green, 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 green. All right. All we got to do is let this orbit bake for two days. So I think I got the timing close enough that we shouldn't have any issues with the orbit um, within two days. So let's go ahead and look at the map and you can sort of see the uh, the square shape between our four satellites. Let's see if I can mess with these settings down here to kind of clean that up really don't care about the networks or the ground stations. I really just want to see the inter-satellite connections, but I don't think any of these buttons are going to do that. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this back on. There's some modes here. I think um, I think that's to show between dish and omnidirectional, but right now all we have is omni. So uh, I'm not sure what that button does, but so you can sort of see the square shape here. That's our failed satellite. Um, but you kind of get the idea. Looks pretty cool having them all finally up there where they need to be. So let's pull up our contract window. Now we'll keep an eye on this time and then we'll start to time warp and now you can get a better idea of um, how that network works. They all stay in communication with each other. They all are connected to the ground. So pretty much most of our satellites have a connection to one of those. So we'll speed a little bit faster. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and just finish this up. All right, shakeout testing completed. Looks like this guy's done. So let's go ahead and head back to the Space Center. All right, I thought it might be a good idea now that our ComSat network up is up to actually give it a really good name. So I figured out uh, what better name than Igor, the Indispensable Global Omnidirectional Relay Network. So we're going to go through all of our comm sets and rename them. Let's start with this guy. I really wish that I could rename from here, but there's still that bug. Hopefully that's fixed where I can click on this guy and rename. But for the time being, we're actually going to have to fly out to this guy. All right, this guy is going to be Igor1. If it would just let me right click on this. I found it hard sometimes to click on these satellite cores. I don't know why. There we go. Rename. Igor 1. Alright, and let's go to the map. And let's find number 2. Alright, this guy is going to be Igor 2. And now we'll switch over here and call this guy Igor 3. 
Rename. Igor 3. And can you guess what's next? I hope so. Alright, and rename to Igor 4. All right, let's head back to the Space Center. All right, once again, happy birthday, Igor. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. I have no idea what we're going to do yet. Maybe go through some contracts. Maybe try to land on the moon. Maybe go uh, to another planet. I don't know. I'm going to have to play around with it. But until then, see you next time.